Strange and mysterious, dark, puzzling and bizarre, an organized chaos filled with uncertainty and oftentimes with a beast lurking within. It has been used to imprison and protect, for sport and to hunt, to torment and ultimately to find enlightenment and be reborn from its intertwining passages and dead ends. My name is Joe and welcome to Myths Reborn. This is part one, Mazes and Labyrinths, Origins. The stories of mazes and labyrinths have amazed and fascinated human cultures for thousands of years. Images of these continuous circular passages with a clear center have been found all around the ancient world. They have been discovered in Cretan coins, Native American petroglyphs, and even ancient Roman bathhouses. In this series, we will explore why mazes and labyrinths have captured the human imagination for so long and why it has once again become a recurring theme in our popular culture. Though they are used synonymously, there is a clear difference in the origin of the words maze and labyrinth. A labyrinth is thought to have originated from the Ladian word labrys, meaning double-edged axe or great power. It is a single path with a single entrance that acts as its only exit. It has one path, one destiny, and one ultimate goal. Labyrinths are a pilgrimage of sorts, placed throughout medieval cathedrals like the Chartres Cathedral in France. Today, labyrinths are a spiritual walk. The twisting long passages make great use of all available space. Nothing is wasted and every step is important. The word maze is derived from the Old English which means to amaze, confound or confuse. Mazes carry with them a more puzzling nature. They are based on decisions, have dead ends. They force the maze walker to double back, to turn around, to question and escape traps and tricks, and often require an active mind to solve and ultimately to find the exit. Mazes and labyrinths are often used synonymously, and their age greatly depends on how one defines them. If we talk about natural mazes, then they are as old as caves and caverns that the first men explored. The first humans entered these caves to find a home, a shelter, a refuge from the outside world. They use intertwining passages to protect themselves from the elements or to face their greatest fears. However, if we were to define labyrinths as exclusively man-made structures, then they are as old as human architecture. Like Umberto Eco wrote in his book, The Name of the Rose, a maze creates the maximum of confusion achieved with the maximum of order. This speaks of labyrinths as symbols of order and chaos. It is a man-made structure of organized chaos. They become symbols of human ingenuity and their dominance over architecture to create this very effect, confusion and order at the same time. The most famous labyrinth is perhaps the one most intermingled with mythology and archaeology. It was Sir Arthur Evans who, in 1897, unearthed a palace which he named Knossos, the capital of Crete. Since Evans' discovery, the myth of Theseus, the Minotaur, and the labyrinth have been associated with this site. Sir Arthur's excavation of the site is what we now understand was a part of the ancient Minoan civilization. One can see through the images of the site that the construction of the palace was made purposefully maze-like. This not only showed Minoan superiority in architectural skill, but as an intimidation technique against foreigners. Its layout was described as confusing and misleading by foreign kings and people. It was said that the palace was made in a specific fashion, not only to be breezier during the hot summer months, but to be more intimidating and purposefully confusing. It is here where we associate the original myth of the labyrinth. There are several versions of this ancient myth coming from many sources including Ovid's Metamorphosis, Virgil's Aeneid, and Plutarch's The Life of Theseus. 
In its basic outlines, the myth relates how Theseus, the son of King Aegeus of Athens, though some do say that he was the son of the sea god Poseidon, and the princess Aethra took up the mantle of hero at an early age by defeating tyrants and thieves on the road to Athens. When he arrived and met his kingly father, Aegeus was troubled. The main conflict arose when the prince of Crete, Androgeus, was killed under questionable circumstances in Attica. Plutarch described it as conditions ascribed to treachery. This sent his father, King Minos, into a rampage, laying siege to Athens and forcing the Athenians to pay tribute for the life of his son in exchange of the lives of seven young men and seven maidens every year, or, depending on the source, every nine years. While King Minos was away in Athens, Pasiphae, his wife, was cursed by the sea god Poseidon, who had been offended when Minos failed to sacrifice an honored bull in his name. The queen grew frantic with lust for the prized bull. She commanded Daedalus, the inventor and architect, to construct a wooden cow covered in hides. The result, a creature, half man and half bull, called the Minotaur. Appalled by this, King Minos had the offspring imprisoned. Daedalus was called upon once again to build an elaborate labyrinth to house and imprison the bull. In Helmut Jakolski's book, The Labyrinth, Symbol of Fear, Rebirth, and Liberation, he described Daedalus's labyrinth as a container for the Minotaur that was a prison, hiding place and temple at the same time a far-flung system of convoluted passages that led to the midpoint, the den of the monster. It was made in such a way that the way in was inescapable and the way out was all but impossible to find. For an outsider looking in, it appears confusing and complex until one treats it like a puzzle and eventually solves the maze. However, for the one inside and trapped within the walls, the labyrinth became synonymous with terror and dread. Knowing that the man-eating monster could be met at any turn, Daedalus himself was barely able to escape after completing the maze. For Theseus, this was a coming-of-age story and the way to become a hero. He volunteered to be taken to Crete and be one of the sacrifices. There, he met the daughter of King Minos, Princess Ariadne. She, who had fallen in love with him, offered to help. In exchange for safe passage away from Crete, Ariadne gave him a ball of twine, a clue to help him decipher the maze and manage the passages within. Inside the dark and fearful labyrinth, Theseus battled the monstrous Minotaur and arose victorious. Theseus entered this metaphorical underworld, defeated the beast, and thanks to the ball of twine, re-emerged from the maze of Victor a hero and was symbolically reborn, the string a metaphorical umbilical cord. This myth becomes a story of the younger generations making their mark on the world while also representing the collapsing Minoan power and the rising Greek civilization. Theseus was not only a hero but eventually became a king. The myth has been one of the most popular of the Greek myths. Daedalus, the Minotaur, King Minos, Theseus, Ariadne, and the Labyrinth are timeless archetypes. Versions of them have appeared everywhere from Chaucer's The Knight's Tale to Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson's Universe. For the past few years, there has been a rebirth of what is known as maze mania, including the use of labyrinths in young adult novels with similar sacrificial, revolutionary, and coming-of-age themes. This rebirth can be seen in movies like The Hunger Games, The Maze Runner, Inception, and Pan's Labyrinth, in books like The Name of the Rose and The House of Leaves, even in video games like The Legend of Zelda series and The God of War. Next week, we will continue to explore mazes in other parts of the ancient world and medieval Europe. Thank you for joining me in this adventure. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, take a look at my website and give this video a like if you enjoyed the material. Leave a comment down below and tell me what is your favorite or least favorite part of the myth of Theseus and subscribe to see more of Myths Reborn.